Let's move on for some more commentary. Uh, Fox uh, business contributor and columnist Liz Peek is with us. David Bonson, founder and managing partner of the Bonson Group, is with you. Uh, thank you, kids. This is a tricky day, and we're waiting for this verdict. The jury is under unrelenting pressure here. I was just talking about it with, uh, with our reporter, Mike Tobin. I mean, they are very aware of the consequences of their decision with respect to the potential or the possibility of any kind of violent outburst. Um, they know it full well. It undermines the jury system, Dave Bonson, doesn't it? Well, it does. And I think the judge said as much yesterday. And I don't think it's the way American rule of law is intended to function, that there even has to be a sort of back of your mind dynamic as to what the social implications could be. There needs to be total impartiality. And to Liz's point about President Biden's intervention, um, there's this thing in our country called separation of powers as well. And this is outside the jurisdiction of the president. Um, and, I, and so I can be as objective and fair as possible. I didn't particularly like it when President Trump intervened with his comments on some of the Flynn and Stone and some of these other trials. I thought that needed to be separate from executive branch and mm -hmm. judicial. But in this particular case, what President Biden's done is not only violate that separation of powers I care about, it's invited the potential for more unrest, and it's really distressing to watch. We, we have to pray for safety here. You know, David, on a lesser note, a lesser, I guess, importance, uh, given the potential for violence in Minneapolis, which would be tragic. But Biden did the same thing down in Alabama for that Amazon union election. Did exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. He just up and, you know, put himself right smack in the middle of it. This is not law and order. This is not unity, right? This is not middle of the road, moderate stuff to quote, bring people together, is it? No, it isn't. And in that particular case, it was really economically telling that the sort of forces of freedom and of what the ability to negotiate your own labor arrangements, that those overpowered the kind of strong pressure from even the president of the United States. And, and so in this particular case, obviously, the jury is going to do what it's going to do. Um, you know, Larry, you and I know about this concept of the broken window fallacy. We think of it as an economic idea from the great Frederick Bastiat. There's a moral broken window fallacy here. The idea that we would think it's good for communities, not just economically and all the damage done that you've been talking about on the whole on your show. But morally, we don't want to facilitate that kind of lawlessness. And, and I think that this is where there's a chance for leadership because we're not getting it from some of the Congress folks. We're not getting it from the White House. But there needs to be a kind of moral leader who can step forward to say this isn't good behavior. David Bonson, one wonders what this city is like now. You know, you've got... Uh a city council way far left, bunch of crazy people talking about defunding the cops, you know, and sometimes when you make your bed, you have to sleep in it. These riots uh, and troublemaking and you got all these outside officials and outside agitators, this can't possibly help Minneapolis. I don't know if you ever get there, but Minneapolis was fabulous. Apparently it's not fabulous anymore. You know, Larry, it's interesting. I actually am in the middle of, of doing a transaction with a, a business that's in Minneapolis, and there's a need for us to meet in person right now. And I had talked about flying out to meet with them, and then I stopped and I said, you know what, why don't you guys fly out to Southern California and meet with me there instead? And, and so there's lost hotel revenue and restaurant revenue and things just for one person's business meeting. And, and, and all I was thinking was kind of rationally around the sort of risk reward trade off. How many other people are thinking the same way? How many businesses are not doing conventions there, moving conferences? But this is something you know as much about as anyone I know, how much capital formation is not coming into Minneapolis because there's not business investment that will take place there as a result of these fears. And the same thing could be said about Portland, Seattle. That's a huge concern because it's longer term. So with the opportunity zones, you got capital formation into a lot of troubled areas. Then you see these events playing out and it's taking capital out of these areas. Absolutely. You know, Dave Bonson, you were talking about capital before and 
Capital is so darn important. I've been trying to sell opportunity zones, David Bonson. But we've put up, we, the Trump administration, put up a thousand of them. It's a, um, you know, it's an improvement on the old uh, enterprise zones. But I can't seem to sell it, Dave Bonson. I thought opportunity zones were a heck of a good idea, and I still do. Well, and, and, and so do I, in the sense that you and I know it doesn't end with the capital coming. The capital comes, the businesses get invested, you get employees, but then beyond that, you get human dignity. Okay, you get an aspirational society, which is what our old friend Jack Kemp right. believed in so much with this empowerment idea. And so the opportunity zone and that thinking, that philosophy of capital coming in to fund these opportunities, it is always more than economic. It's an economic idea that leads to a moral empowerment mm -hmm. because they are invested in so that they can have dignity, they can have purpose. And, and this is whether it's uh, minority owned businesses, underprivileged, underdeveloped. This is sort of what the conservative heart is supposed to be about. And I think you're exactly right. And yet what we see so often right now from far left progressives is an ideology that strips people of their dignity and is determined to hold on to a sort of oppression based worldview, which, of course, is Marxian to its core. You know, the word that always comes to mind, to me at least, when you get into problems, crises like this, is demoralization, demoralization. Yeah. And it cuts across everything, the moral terms, the financial and economic terms, and the family terms. It